OK, so the uh, motivation of this work is the increased adoption of uh, auto bidding in uh, Internet advertising. Uh, in auto bidding, we have uh, the following kind of setup between advertiser and auction platform. The advertiser provides the auction platform a high level goals and constraints. And the auto bidding layer converts those goals and constraints into a per auction bid. Into the auction. There are many performance-based auto bidding products. We are going to focus on target CPA, target cost per conversion, uh, where the goal is to maximize the total number of conversions. And the constraint is a constraint on the average cost per conversion. Uh, so the, the bidding program looks like this, maximize the number of conversions, subject to the spend is at most the target times the number of conversions. And the same as saying the average uh, spend on a conversion is at most T. Okay. So we can see that this is uh, a new kind of objective function. Uh, advertiser utilities are modeled a bit differently from the classic setting, uh, which is the quasi linear setting where uh, the uh, goal yeah. is to maximize yeah. so profit and value minus cost. While in TCPA, the goal is to maximize volume or maximize value. Subject uh, uh, yeah. to we see only your title slide. So is it? Just making sure. No, I've been moving it, I'm sorry. Yeah, we still see only your title slide. Okay. I think maybe you're not presenting the, sharing the presentation mode. Uh, it and mutes me when I start these slides. Can I leave and join again? Um, Okay, so uh, in this oh, case, I I can, uh, how, how about now? I think you're sharing the, yeah, that's the right screen. Perfect. Is it uh, moving now? Moving and I hear you. Great. Okay, so Excellent. please. Go on. Sorry, is that fine now? It's fine, yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so um, what I was saying is that, well, I should. Uh, show this slide again, the performance-based auto bidding product we are uh, interested in is a target CPA, where the goal is to maximize conversions subject to an average cost per conversion constraint. So the goal, so the bidding LP looks like maximizing number of conversions subject to the spend is at most the target times the number of conversions. Okay. Um, so we can see that this is a new kind of objective function where in the classic quasi-linear setting, the goal is to maximize profit, which is value minus cost. Uh, while in target CPA, the goal is to maximize volume or value subject to an average cost constraint. That my average cost per conversion is at most T. And the goal of this work and the related papers is assuming that this is the true utility function, uh, how does that change classic auction design results? Uh, and in particular, the, the goal of this paper is, is VCG still the best for efficiency with this new model? Um, so there's a bunch of previous work along this line, which I'll go through. Uh, the starting point is this paper with uh, Agarwal and Badanadiru in Wine 19. Uh, where we formulated the problem a bit more generally um, and showed that for auto bidding, the bidding LP leads to a kind of dual based optimal bidding formula for truthful auctions. And then we proved that the price of anarchy uh, for efficiency in the VCG auction is two. So I'll explain what this last sentence means because we will generalize this result. So in the TCPA setting, a metric for efficiency is the sum over advertisers of the target CPA of the advertiser multiplied by the number of conversions. And so this is the notion of efficiency we will use. Uh, there are two interpretations for this metric. Uh, firstly, it is very simply the total TCPA weighted number of conversions generated, or essentially the value of conversions generated. But uh, it also fits into the literature as liquid welfare where essentially for a given allocation, we are taking the sum over all the advertisers of the bound and the spend of each advertiser. Because remember that the TCPA bidding is 
fitting constraint is that the spend is at most t times the number of conversions, exactly the right hand side bound goes into the efficiency metric. So with this notion of efficiency, we can ask uh, what is opt, what is the optimal allocation for a given instance. Here it is simply to allocate each query to the bidder which maximizes that efficiency metric, which is the one which maximizes target times conversion rate. Um, and now we can come to a notion of equilibrium. Uh, it was proved in that paper that given fixed prices, each bidder has an optimal bidding formula, which looks as follows. The bid of a bidder for query Q is the conversion rate at Q at times a multiplier for that bidder. Um, it's kind of a bid scaling. Uh, however, prices are not fixed. They depend on other bidders' bids. So all the bids depend on each other and we have to look for a system equilibrium. And uh, it was pro proven in that paper that if the underlying auction is VCG, then the price of anarchy is two, which is means that uh, even in the worst equilibrium, you get at least half of opt. I won't go into the proof just yet, but here's a tight example which uh, uh, demonstrates difficulty in the setting. Uh, this is again from the ABM 19 paper. Uh, there are two bidders A and B and two queries P and Q. And uh, the value on the edges is simply the conversion rate. So I'll use val instead of conversion rate now on. Um, so A has a value one for P and B also has almost a value of one for Q, but A also has a small value epsilon for Q. And both the target CPAs are one in this setting. Clearly the optimal allocation is to go horizontally and we get a total efficiency of two minus epsilon uh, because here we can kind of ignore the spends altogether uh, looking for an opt allocation. But it turns out that the following red bidding is an equilibrium. Bidder A picks a very high multiplier, one over epsilon. It bids a very high bid on P, um, but it gets it for free because there's no competition there. And it bids a bid of one on Q and wins Q at a cost of uh, one minus epsilon uh, because bidder B has a multiplier of one and bids one minus epsilon. Uh, so in this case, unfortunately, we allocate both the queries P and Q to A because it's the winning bidder and we are running the second price auction, um, which leads to an equilibrium efficiency of just one plus epsilon and a price of anarchy of two. So what's happening here, and which will be useful later, is that bidder A gets query P, which has a high value now uh, for free. And this enables it to bid high on query Q. And uh, we end up misallocating query queue. So after this result, there was further related work. Uh, uh, Deng et al. in uh, WW21 asked the following question that given that VCG has a price of an RK of two, can we improve on it? And they introduced a new model which said that, let's suppose that the auctioneer has knowledge of those values on the edges and it can use them in the auction. Then they introduced an auction called boost which was uh, uh, simply a second price auction, not just on the bid, but on bid plus C times the value, where C is a parameter. And they proved a theorem that boost achieves a price of anarchy of C plus two divided by C plus one. And you can see that if C is chosen to be zero, we recover the VCG uh, price of anarchy of two, uh, but as C is taken uh, to be large, this tends to one was further work by a superset of the authors providing further results uh, in NeurIPS 21 along this direction. So with all this background, now we can get to and understand the results in this work. Um, we ask the same question, can we achieve a better price of anarchy than two, uh, which is the POA of VCG, however, without such additional value information. And this is, well motivated in practice, it captures a setting in which the auction can only work on bids and not on extra value information. For example, if bidding is by a third party or a separate system. Uh, and uh, interestingly or surprisingly, we can prove that uh, in fact, this is possible. We can beat the efficiency of VCG uh, without using extra information. 
there exists a randomized uh, truth, a randomized truthful auction, uh, which we call RAND with two parameters, alpha and P, uh, which achieves a price of anarchy of 1.89, which is less than two, obviously. Uh, with the caveat that this is the result for two bidders. We can extend this price of anarchy result for a small constant number of bidders. However, we also provide a match kind of a complementary impossibility result uh, to show that, which shows that as the number of bidders goes to infinity, then no randomized truthful auction uh, without extra information can achieve a price of anarchy better than two. <clears throat> so um, let me go into uh, defining uh, this auction, rand alpha comma p, as defined for two bidders. So alpha and p are parameters, and alpha is going to be greater than or equal to one. And p is a probability parameter between zero and half. And I have two bidders, b1 and b2, and let's take, let's assume without loss of generality that b1 is at least b2, so b1 is the higher bid. Um, and the auction allocation works as follows. If B1 is greater than or equal to alpha times B2, so if it beats the runner up handily, then bidder one wins the item. Otherwise, uh, so this is the case when bidder one is bigger than bidder two, but not by a margin of alpha, then we will let bidder one win with the probability of uh, one minus P, which is at least a half. And bidder two, the lower bidder wins with the probability of P. Okay, so that is the uh, randomized allocation function of this auction. And the pricing is going to be the truthful pricing. Uh, note that a bidder, as it increases its bid, can win with different probabilities, either zero P, one minus P, or one. Uh, and in each case, we will use the truthful pricing for the uh, expected allocation. In particular, note that in the case when the bidder wins handily, then um, uh, bidder one pays strictly more than B2. That is something that we will use. So it pays, it pays strictly more than the second price. However, in other cases, it pays less than the second price. Uh, so there is a trade-off there. Uh, two quick notes. This auction strictly generalizes second price auction. If alpha is one, this is second price auction. And uh, Similar auctions have been studied in the literature before. In fact, it is an instance of the family threshold auctions from uh, Aloha Bespes in management science. And there are other uh, uh, papers referred to here which have similar auctions as well. Um, so in the remaining time, I'll try and go through the proofs of both the results, or at least give a hint of the intuition behind the proofs. Uh, so to prove the positive result, we will first, um, um, let's first look at the proof of the price of anarchy for BCG, which is two from the previous paper. Okay. So take an equilibrium or take a bidding equilibrium under VCG. Now every query has an optimal bidder, the one which you'd like to allocate it to, call it X star, and the other bidders can be called Y. And we will, we will divide all the queries into two parts, uh, which naturally we call Q1 and Q4. Uh, Q4 is a set of queries where X star wins the uh, item. So we do the right allocation, which that's great. Uh, in that case, the efficiency in equilibrium is at least the opt efficiency for the set Q4. And Q1 is a set where we did the wrong allocation. So the X star did not win the query. This is second price auction. Uh, however, something good does happen here. The price that the other bidder pays, the winning bidder Y pays, is of course at least the bid of X star because this is a second price auction. And the bid of X star in fact is uh, a lower bound on the value uh, uh, achieved in opt. We need to conclude shortly. so. Yeah. Um, so, um, so in this case, also something good happens, uh, and uh, the two 
classes together give an efficiency, uh, give a price of anarchy of two. Uh, in Rand Alpha now, uh, we have two more uh, cases, Q2 and Q3. Uh, these are the cases when X star wins with probability P or probability one minus P. Uh, Q4 is the same, you made the right allocation. You get a pure win in the first set of queries where, uh, where you actually made the wrong allocation. Uh, it turns out that the other bidder pays more than opt and you get a, a bigger gain over here. And then the two middle uh, cases are kind of the medium cases where uh, we get moderately good outcome in probability of matching the opt bidder as well as the spend. And we can put that all together. We don't know what is the share of opt in those four cases, um, but you can write a so-called factor revealing linear program and it shows that no matter how opt is distributed over these cases, uh, the price of anarchy is at least something, uh, this formula here. And it turns out that for the choice of parameters, alpha equal to 1.7 and P equal to two fifth, this is uh, 1.89. I won't go into the impossibility result, but I will just give a quick intuition as to why this works before concluding. Uh, if you look at the uh, tight example for um, uh, for for the second price auction, uh, we can now show that that example doesn't work anymore. Remember that A was bidding high and bidding one to try and grab Q, but now with these bids, A only wins with probability three fifths, and therefore the efficiency in equilibrium is better. If A tries to go and go ahead and win Q with probability one, it has to pay much higher than uh, the bid one minus epsilon of its competitor, and that will violate its TCPA constraint. And this is essentially the intuition why uh, Rand Alpha uh, has a better price of anarchy. There is a similar tight example for this uh, option well, as well. We, we really need I to won't go into because we're beyond time, so sorry for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Anyak. It's a very interesting work. And uh, I'm afraid we don't uh, have remaining time for questions because we're beyond the schedule. Uh, so uh, if there are any questions, so please feel free to contact uh, Anyak and uh, 